So, like most of you who have been either doing cycling, swimming, running, all of those, some other sport for a long time, you probably have a Strava account where you analyze, publish, share, etc. But you probably have legacy accounts from before then that don't go back that far. So for me, for example, I don't know, I think I joined Strava in 2015. However, before there, <coughs> I had Garmin devices for a long time and it's stuck in Garmin Connect. And before then I had Sports Tracker. Yes, Sports Tracker, which you used to use on Nokia smartphones. Um, and uh, going back to 2007 or something like that. And I would like to put those onto my Strava accounts. Now, I did a little bit of digging and it'll only sync so far back. Um, I think when you joined, I honestly can't remember if it sinks a little bit further back or not, a year or something, I can't remember. But it doesn't go back into the entirety. There were some scripts around and people have updated those scripts, but you know, as you'll find, and one of the reasons why people don't do that many apps that scrape screens of websites anymore is that people update their websites quite often. And so they don't work. And so, long story short, I went about putting all of my uh, Garmin, uh, old Garmin stuff going back to 2010, I think, so five years worth, for various reasons. One of them is that, you know, we are now in a lockdown and I've made no secret of the fact that I've gained 10 kilos above the 10 kilos that I was already overweight. And so from a vain, purely vain point of view, I want some of my old data to spank some of my friends with. Uh, but from a real mature adult point of view, I also want to be able to go back and analyze all this data. Now, when I tried to do it the first time, I made some mistakes, which I'm gonna show you now, which I don't want you to repeat, uh, which involve a huge amount of post-processing. Um, I'll show you how to avoid those mistakes. And uh, yeah, so let's get on with it and I'll show you the screen down here. So here we have our Strava open and we have our Garmin, which we'll come to in a minute. Now, what we're gonna want to do is put this in reverse order and then we'll be able to see the earliest uh, events that we have in Strava. And so you can see here, my earliest events are 2010, but I think that's because I went and did 2010 to 2011. Now, I'm not gonna go and bore you and get to the dates, but I pretty, I'm pretty sure I did all 2010 and 2012. I'll go and check that off camera. But what we can see is that Basically, prior to uh, 2010, I don't really have anything, and that I know is in Sports Tracker because I used to use my Nokia N95. But all these I imported uh, in a long and boring session, which I'll show you now. However, I made a mistake, and that mistake is that if I go into them, the evening run will show the a pair of trainers that now has you know, 1,500 kilometers rather than the um, correct uh, the yeah so the Adidas Adios Boost now has 2100 kilometers which is wrong because it's basically taken my default shoe and if we go to a ride as well it has messed up my uh, default bike which is the Strada and the Strada will now show uh, it doesn't show it here but if I go in and look at the Strada it'll now show a ridiculous amount of kilometers so what we're going to do is go and create uh, a new pair of shoes called um, uh, Generic uh, Legacy Import Garmin and a new pair, a bike called Legacy Import Garmin. And we're going to import all the Garmin ones and I'll do the same for Sports Tracker. And then, you know, the ones from 2010 to 2000 or whatever, I'll have to just work with. But I'm not going to bore you with how to do that online because, you know, um, I've got rummage around and try and find out, but I'm gonna add those two and I'm gonna come right back. So yeah, don't make the same mistake I did of sitting there on a Saturday morning when you had something horrible to do for work that you didn't want to do. And so instead you transferred two years worth of uh, <laughs> Garmin stuff onto Strava and then realized as you got to the end of it, it had added you know, 2000 kilometers uh, to your favorite shoes and you know another I don't know how many thousand kilometers to your favorite bike 
Now, if anybody knows how to go in and correct two years, um, we'll go back and correct all of those, I'm all ears. But uh, sadly, I think I'm going to have to click on each one and go in and edit it. But that's life. Okay, so for bikes, you have to go into your profile and then settings and then my gear. I've managed to find that so far. It took me a few minutes. Honestly, the you know the app is pretty intuitive and all very simple. Even though they change stuff, you got used to it very quickly. But the uh, the website, my God, it's all over the place. But anyway, we are going to add a bike, which is here, and we're going to call it uh, Garmin Legacy Import, and it's going to be let's call it a road bike who knows let's call it a cross bike and let's give it eight kilos average uh, and it's going to be a Borman super fast special and uh, generic name for all legacy from Garmin Connect. There we go, this is my new bike. Should we make this capitals? Go on then, let's make this capitals. Safe bike. And we need to make sure that this is the default bike. So let's click it here. That's how we make it default. Cool. And it just so happens we've got running shoes underneath. So we're gonna add a running shoe I'm going to call it, oh dear god, this is a different experience as well, why don't they have all the bike mix up there? Uh, let's call it, in those times I was mostly a Nike free runner, so let's go down to the ends, and uh, generic Garmin Legacy. Old, old Garmin Connect imports. Okay, notify. I don't really want notifying. Let's add to these shoes. I got notified a few times, as you can imagine. And we're going to make these the default ones. And do we need to save this? We don't know. I think that seems to have done it. So let's, well, the only way to do it is to refresh the page and see if it has done it. And yep, it seems Garmin Legacy Imports and unfortunately we've got Nike Generic Import. So let's get on with the import. So. I need to remember when was the last date that I did all of these. If you go into uh, training, my activities, and uh, you should be able to see obviously in order, but if we reverse the date, we can now see that the 2007 Oddball and the 2010 generic sort of start is here. And I honestly can't remember until when I um, imported them all. So I'm gonna go and check that now but I do believe I did until 2012. Now, you may want to do this in reverse order because you then avoid the issue I've got now. But I think if we click forward, we'll quickly see that I did everything until, I did all 2010 and 2011. I don't know why it's scrolling to the top of the page when I do that. Uh, so yeah, let's click these through. Okay, so there we see there is a gap between the end of 2011 and 2014. So I'm going to have to import now, uh, basically the 1st of January 2012 to, well, let's just call it 2014. Um, so I'm going to do a year first, I think it'll be easier. So I'm going to go into Garmin Connect and go from the 1st of January 2012 to, let's see, 
So we go into the advanced search, which is needed. Uh, how do we do the advanced search? I can't remember now. I tell you, some of these interfaces are not as good as they should be. Uh, ah, let's go to all. I honestly can't remember how you get the advanced window up. So all my activities. But there is a, let's just go to 2012. I can't remember if it does that. Somehow you can get an advanced search. How did I get the advanced search? Do you go like this? Ah, yeah. So you have to click on one of these spots. <laughs> One of these sports, and you need to get the advanced icon. Okay, so let's get the advanced icon. Um, choose, so we leave all of the different types, even though I've selected running here. And we're going to take a date range, which is going to be, if we can get the on-screen calendar. No, ah, yes, we can, yeah, by clicking in here. So we can either go back like this, or we can just try and see the format, which is like that. So let's go from the 1st of the 1st of 2012. Let's see if that works. You might have to click there. Yes, you do. And I'm going to cut and paste this and go to, let's do the real dates. So what's the next date I've got? So let's go to the 7th. I don't really want to import that. So let's go to the 6th of the 6th of 2014. So it's 06, 06, 2014. And we don't want any different type, so let's filter activities. And there we go. Now, I can't believe the 10th of May. Why would I have a gap? It doesn't matter. Now, because I did it historically in reverse order, I'm going to reverse the order. And now what I did for a period of time, what I was doing is actually clicking into each one and then coming back which is okay here, but at some point uh, it stopped. Um, it, it, what's nice about this is it auto refreshes when you get to the bottom, but it kept bringing me back to the top, which was rather annoying. So my new model is to basically hover over and open in a new tab. So we're gonna do the 1st of January and I was doing this by a month at a time. Yeah, this is not gonna change everything, but if you want your stats, and as we know, data is key and you want to manipulate your data and you are a data fiend as we all are in today's data driven times, then this is what you've got to do. So I'm going to do all of January in a go. And make sure you don't get it wrong and open in a new tab. And then you go one by one and you export original is what I was doing and export original. I didn't try exporting anything else because I really wanted the fit files, but you'll see what is quite annoying. So I'm gonna do this. So what I did now is I literally just closed down the windows. It's actually easy to do it from this side. You just close down the windows by holding here. Now, this is on a Mac. Don't know if you can hear my fan kicking in, but sorry, I didn't mean to click my fingers. But as you can see, we are now still where we used to be. I'm going to maximize the window again to make it a little bit easier. And we can start with one thing you do need to do right now is delete all of these. Otherwise, you will go even more nuts. So we're going to keep this one open. And now we're going to go through February. Now, you can do more. The problem is, obviously, as you can see, if you do more than a month at a time, that exercise is going to be even harder. So, yeah, you can see I hammed that up a bit because I was trying to record, see what I was doing on the screen and everything at the same time. But I kind of show you uh, when I did that on my own, I was able to do, I think, up to about six months at a time and concentrate. Now, there is something where you can do, uh, you can export all of your activities into a single CSV. So you've got a list of all your activities and you can you know, then go and see if you've missed any of them. But honestly, for me, if this is not life and death. This is not, uh, you know, it's not an audit. Uh, it doesn't matter if you know the odd bit of data is missing. Um, for me, it was just you know about getting the vast majority on, and I'm pretty happy with the fact that I put enough 
effort into the you know the checking going through um, if you want to be light on that then obviously you know you'll need the spreadsheet but I'm pretty happy with the fact that you know you go through and count how many you've got and then count how many is in there and yeah so if this was helpful to you please do like subscribe I'd say ring the bell button but then you might be disappointed because there's lots of different things on my channel uh, but yeah, if you feel in, yeah, if you like everything that I do here, obviously ring the bell. I like it when people ring my bell. Can you say that? Yeah, it's been a while. I'll see you in the next one.